Hey everybody, you are tuned in to the Free Matt Podcast. I am Matt Free Matt. I am usually joined by General Patrick Flynn. He is handling other affairs. He wants to say that he's doing well and uh, sends his well wishes. Now, something I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, the Free Matt Podcast is usually a libertarian roundtable discussion. I did um, have an article, but I wanted to say this was a special video about defending the undefendable. I wanted to, I guess, get a good laugh out of this. Um, defending the undefendable, Rick Santorum, or as some people have called him, Rick Sanitarium. I would call him Rick Sanitarium because I think he's nutty. And, oh Lord, let's, let's look, look. I had even pulled up the article for this one. It mentioned about CNN dropping Rick Santorum uh, comments about uh, Native Americans. Uh, he's a former Republican senator and two-time failed GOP presidential candidate. Source of irony, my source is the Huffington Post, which I find hilarious. It's com comedy gold mine. Um, said that he sparked outrage last month after claiming there was nothing in America before white colonizers arrived and that Native people haven't contributed much to American culture anyway. We, in his, here's his words, we birthed a nation from nothing. I mean, there was nothing here. I mean, yes, we have Native Americans, but candidly, there isn't much Native American culture in American culture. And, of course, uh, many people demanded CNN fire him over that. Uh, some civil rights groups got upset also. Um, CNN was silent because, well, they look like assholes. Um, do, 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 do. And it said that uh, quietly ended his contract with Centaurum this week. Of course, a... Uh, a, a, an anonymous executive who couldn't speak openly or he wanted to speak openly but couldn't put his name behind his or her name behind it or theirs or Zim's or whatever you want to call it um of course he was on Cuomo pro uh, Cuomo prime time and, and he said explain so shortly after he made his racist comments don't know why I'm speaking this accent but dear God Please bear with me. Okay, leadership wasn't particularly satisfied with that appearance. None of the anchors wanted to book him, so he was essentially benched anyway. And of course, he said uh, he misspoke. Um, his comments were out of context. Um, yeah, he's pretty much PNG'd after this. But, uh, of course... Um, they, a lot of people got mad about CNN, about what he had said. Um, it said that uh, televising someone with view, this is a, did a NC, uh, NCAI, President Fallen Sharp, I like that name, said in a fiery statement last month, televising someone with his views on Native American genocide is fundamentally no different than putting an outright Nazi on television to justify the Holocaust. Any mainstream media organization should fire him or face a boycott from more than 500 tribal nations and our allies from around the country and worldwide. And of course, the Hollyweird people showed up. A, a day of action with some to pressure CNN to fire Santorum. Slacktivism, of course. They held a day-long tweet storm with the hashtag Remove Rick and a Twitter chat with Native journalists to talk about the impact of Native erasure in the media. Uh, okay, I understand that. They also circulated an open letter to CNN executives with more than 120 signatures um, uh, from uh, Native leaders. and uh, that, that's, that makes sense to me. That's, that's the people getting most affected, but... There were some, the Hollyweird crowd, Joaquin Phoenix, Ed Helms, Mark Ruffalo, Piper Parabo, which I like saying, and Sarah Silverman, which is a, I love the alliteration, by the way, uh, educators and artists, 
Um, now back to I needed to say. Well, there's a reason why I had I, I gave you those tidbits of this uh, article. There is, oh Lord, um, yes, I think the article left out. If he would have said, "Hey, we did a we." When we finally got those people out of the way, the, the the colonies were possible after hundreds of years of pestilence and disease basically wiped out our only opposition here. Basically, their culture, the individual tribes were destroyed and by disease and uh, off key dealings, uh, the treaties like the Cherokee Treaty, I believe. Of uh, bear with me, I didn't have my notes in front of me. Um, if he would have had said that, uh, by the time our country was formed, the vast majority of Indian groups had already been decimated by disease and war, and they could have fought back if. Uh, how about this? They would have had culture if they hadn't been decimated. And I look at this and I said, uh, I think he's uh, Rick Santorum. He was an idiot who didn't have, uh, didn't really dig into his information very well. I, I'm not pro Indian. I'm not pro Rick Santorum at all. But I will say that a lot of uh, our history books have kind of overlooked uh, things about Indians and, and, and our, our dealings with them from the, what, 15s and 1600s? And native groups, not just in I'm sorry, I like the term native groups. And that a lot of individual tribes had been decimated because of disease and uh, some dirty dealings with the government and power power elite. Now, you're asking me how I can defend Rick, Rick Santorum. By the time that I want to say by the time that in a in an international sense, this is after the war of 1812 when the American colonies, or the just say the newly found country of the United States of America, when it was able to stand on its two feet and be recognized many, many places around the world, the uh, more or less the Indians have been decimated, and uh, their impact their impact was lessened. It, it is obtuse to think that that they didn't have a cultural impact, but it was lessened by what had happened with them, which was a tragedy. And these people had treat a lot of them had treaties backing up uh, their. I mean, they're independent countries, and and by because of dirty dealings, that's it's it's horrific. I think it was a little obtuse for old Rick to say this. And you asked me how, like what I'm saying to defend him. I think he's too stupid to know any better. That's why I should defend him. He's, uh, he's an idiot. He's somebody's idiot. And that's bad because I'm making fun of, uh, I'm not trying to make fun of people, Pennsylvania, but he's... Oh, Lord, what's the word I'm looking for? He's not the, wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. And, um, oh, Lord, I mean, he's an idiot, guys. You ought to feel sorry for him. That's, you ought to feel sorry for him. And it, you should be thanking him for an opportunity to speak about uh, the, you know, cologne, like, pre-colonial history uh, when I say the when the 13 colonies were being uh, populated by people from the uh, uh, Europe Western civilization yeah uh, I mean you look at uh, you look at some of the uh, 
people who landed in Virginia and places like that and fighting Indians and not keeping up their words, people getting greedy over land deals. And it, it, it should be a learning moment from old Rick sanitarium that some, I mean, we're how many, what, 400 years removed from some of that tomfoolery and it's more than 400 years. It's closer to 500 years. And the one thing that people don't recognize is the people who landed here kind of ended up screwing the Indians, you know, legally and what have you. I, I, I mean, I don't know what I'd be able to do with it besides, hey, let's look at history and try to learn from it. And maybe that's where I should defend Rick Santorum is look at his ignorance and say, hey, don't be ignorant. Learn. Let's go dig around in history and say, hey, we're, maybe we can keep up our end of a treaty. Maybe we should be smarter uh, uh, before we write treaties that we're not going to uphold. And I mean, things like that. Maybe we should be a little bit smarter when it comes to uh, how we deal with other uh groups outside of the regular uh, Eurocentric idea. Uh, maybe we could learn something from it. I'm not the biggest kumbaya person in the world, but when it comes to treaties and people who have uh, individual cultures, the last thing you should try to do is, if you're a lily white guy, to try to act like you're the biggest uh, the big, uh, I mean, like you could speak for these people, and I can't. I'm not trying to, but I'll tell you, we we uh, we should probably learn from history because if if we forget and not remember the bad parts of history, we'll repeat them and we'll commit genocide on our own people, and we're learning that already. There's people who want to commit genocide uh, and undo history and only do certain histories of, that they like. And this is both sides of the party, so or both sides of the uh, spectrum. And maybe, maybe you should uh, take a tip from uh, Rick Santorum and look, read your history. That's where I can defend them. You need to read your history. Don't be an idiot. All right, folks. Uh, if you like what you... Uh, how about this? Even if you don't like what you've seen... Hit subscribe, hit like, hit notifications, point down at your crotch. There's Twitter, Gab, Parlay, even though I don't like it. And there, I have an email address if you want to send some hate email. Uh, I mean, have a nice uh, rest of the week. Don't be Rick Santorum. See you.